Good morning! I am Martina Palla and I am a veterinary surgeon. Today I'm gonna talk about my thesis work, the injuries of superficial digital flexor tendon in the equine athlete. This study was performed in collaboration with Ilaria Grossi and Francesca Beccati. The aim of this study was to assess the efficacy of new therapeutic techniques to improve rehabilitation and reduce healing time after SDFT injuries. Why SDFT? Because superficial digital flexor tendon injuries generally determine the end of the equine athlete's career. The equine SDFT The equine SDFT is almost like human Achille tendon. During gallop, this tendon stores and returns energy with an efficiency of about 100%. These increase the risk of tendon rupture. Patterns of injury Tendon injury can be acute as a result of a sudden overloading of the fetal joint that overwhelms SDFT resistive strength or it can be chronic, resulting from a slow tendon degeneration that leads to fibrous rupture. What about healing? The healing response is slow and results in the formation of a strength and not elastic scar tissue. That leads to recurrence of lesion, usually in the areas close to the damage. How to avoid these situations? Once diagnosis is made, the veterinary surgeon must plan a controlled exercise scheme based on individual necessities. In fact, there is not a standard rehabilitation program. Moreover, it's particularly important to follow up the healing process with ultrasound to modulate the intensity of the rehabilitation plan. Controlled exercise plan is the first step of rehabilitation program. It can be performed on flat surfaces using reactive track that is neither too hard nor too soft. Moreover, it can be performed uphill because it reduces tendon loading without reducing work. The best exercise is swimming. Thanks to buoyancy, the gravity pressures considerably decrease as well as the stresses on distal limbs. Swimming enhances the activation of protractor muscles to win the hydrodynamic resistance. In this way, the tendon is safe without horse rest. Controlled exercise can be combined with new therapeutic techniques. Low frequencies ultrasounds generate biological effects on tissues such as thermal effects, those increase cellular metabolism, blood supply and removal of waste substances generated by the injury. It leads to pain and muscular spasm reduction and increases the tendon extensively. No thermal effects perform micromassage that reduce pain and edema and helps tendon regeneration. Meanwhile, TECA therapy can be defined as an endogenous thermotherapy. In fact, heating is achieved through the administration of an electromagnetic flow, capable of converting into heat within the tissue, without overheating superficial tissues. This therapy increases cellular metabolism, reduces inflammation and pain by decreasing local nerve conduction in pain fibers. The thermal effect is more effective than low frequencies ultrasound effect, but ticker does not perform micromassage. Both ticker therapy and low frequencies ultrasounds can be associated with extracorporeal shockwave therapy. Shock waves are acoustic waves characterized by jump change in pressure, high amplitude and no periodicity. The treatment is carried out once and repeated after two weeks at necessity. Shock waves promote biostimulating and analgesic effect and increase neovascularization, encouraging healing. This type of therapy is enormously powerful, therefore only veterinarians can do it. 
despite my study is not completed, here the results show that instrumental therapies in association with regenerative therapies, i.e. PRP, and controlled exercises can be helpful to reduce rehabilitation time and improve healing. In this way, horses can return to athletic activity sooner. I hope you enjoyed this rehabilitation film. Once again, I'd like to thank my professor Marco Pepe and my co-relators Ilaria Grossi and Francesca Beccati.